Today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Fire. For more than 20 years, Midwest Fire has been manufacturing high-quality tankers, tanker pumpers, and fire rescue vehicles in the United States and Canada. Keeping firefighters safe while enhancing their capabilities is what they do best. To learn more, go to MidwestFire.com. This is Fire Chief William Ball from the Williamsport Fire and EMS, and you're listening to SA Matters Radio with Dr. Richard Gasolet. The SA Matters mission is simple. They want to help us see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. Hello and welcome to the 100th episode of the Situational Awareness Matters radio show. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. Yeah, we made it all the way to episode 100. I am so incredibly excited about this that it's hard for me to even put it into words. I really want to make this episode special. I'm going to share the story of how it all started, what makes my mission so personal, And I'm going to give some stuff away as a way to say thank you for coming along with me for the ride. The purpose of this show is to help improve situational awareness and decision making for individuals and teams who work in high risk, high consequence environments. The SA Matters mission has been and remains to help you see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. I'm coming to you today from Towson, Maryland, where I'm in town to deliver a program on situational awareness for the Maryland Fire and Rescue Institute's National Fire Service Staff and Command Program. This is the 15th consecutive year that I've presented for MIFRI's Staff and Command Program, so it really is a special event unto itself. In today's feature segment, we're going to take a walk down memory lane as I share with you the backstory about how it all got started, what we can offer you, and I'm going to share the vision of the future, where we're headed, and some new things on the horizon. I'm excited about what we have coming up in the future. But before I jump into the feature segment, as I always do, I want to take a moment to thank the departments and organizations that have hosted recent Situational Awareness Matters Tour Stop events. Your efforts to bring this valuable and powerful training on situation awareness and high-risk, high-consequence decision-making to your members and others in your region are greatly appreciated. Recent tour stops have included the Addison Fire Department in Texas, the Los Angeles County Fire Department Fire Officers Conference in Pasadena, the Howard County, Maryland Department of Fire and Rescue Services, Tom's River Fire District No. 2 in New Jersey, And, of course, where I am now at the Maryland Fire Rescue Institute's National Fire Service Staff and Command Program. If you're interested in joining me for an upcoming Situational Awareness Matters tour stop, on March 18th, I'll be delivering the closing keynote for the Center for Public Safety Excellence Conference in Orlando, Florida. March 19th, I'll be delivering the keynote for the Minnesota State Fire School in Alexandria. March 21 to 25, I'll be delivering a company officer development program in Columbus, Indiana. March 22nd, a situation awareness program for the Madison County LEPC in Anderson, Indiana. March 26th and 27th, a company officer development institute program in Fort Wayne, Indiana. March 31, a program for the community fire department in Houston, Texas. April 1 and 2 for the Montgomery County Fire Chiefs Association in Texas. April 9th, the Delaware Volunteer Firefighters Association will be doing a program on generational leadership. March 12th, the Minnesota Department of Pipeline Safety Conference in Breezy Point, Minnesota. April 13th, the North Metro Fire Department in Broomfield, Colorado. April 14th, the Castle Rock Fire Department in Castle Rock, Colorado. April 19th, the Fire Department Instructors Conference in Indianapolis, Indiana. April 20th, the Texas A&M Fire Service, I'm sorry, Forest Service in San Antonio, Texas. April 23, 24, 
back to Fort Wayne for another Company Officer Development Institute program, April 30 to May 1, a program for the Lebanon Fire District in Oregon. If you're interested in, uh, in attending an upcoming Situational Awareness Matters tour stop, head over to the samatters.com website and click on the blue box on the right side of the homepage that says Upcoming Events Schedule. Here's hoping there's a tour stop near you and we'll get a chance to meet up. If you're interested in hosting a Situational Awareness Matters tour stop program in 2016 or 2017 for your department or association, just contact me through the samatters.com site Click on the Contact Us tab, and we'll get something set up for you. Here's a tip for those who might be interested in hosting at a reduced cost. I schedule a number of what I call companion programs. These are programs on adjoining days to other programs. So if you see that I'm going to be delivering a program within a couple of hours of where your department is, and you think you might want to tag along as a companion, contact me. You can save as much as 20% off the program cost by being a companion to an existing program. Okay, let's jump into the feature segment as I share how it all got started. So I got my start at the age of 18 when I joined my hometown fire department just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I spent two years just having the time of my life uh, learning how to put out fires and cut up cars and jump off buildings on ropes. And I wasn't worried a whole lot about my safety because I knew I had good people who would watch out for me. Good company officers, good training officers, and good chief officers. So I was just focusing on learning and having fun. And then the most incredible thing happened that I completely was not expecting. I got promoted, or I should say, elected into an officer's position and I was scared to death because I didn't know what I was doing I didn't have any incident command training no strategy and tactics training all I had was enough popularity to get enough votes to get elected into this position and uh, I turned to someone who gave me some advice about how to uh, overcome my fears of being an officer and they said start taking some classes on incident command and strategy and tactics and start reading case studies where firefighters were getting hurt and killed and so that's what I did I took some classes and I started reading these case studies of near miss reports and line of duty death reports and watching videos of incidents where firefighters were getting hurt and killed and along the way I found myself asking a question over and over again that I couldn't answer as I read these cases and the question was simply this when they were operating in those environments and things were going to go wrong how could they not see it coming in so many cases there were clues and indicators and signs that this incident that they were operating at was going to end in a disaster but somehow they couldn't see it it was like they were blind to what was happening right in front of them and I thought how could they be so blind and I used to get so frustrated and angry at the people operating at these incident scenes. And, and I would judge them harshly in, 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 in very uncomplimentary ways. And they were people that I didn't even know. And I was judging circumstances that I really didn't even know. But I didn't know how to do anything but to slap them down and to put judgment onto them. And... Uh, then, in uh, you know, fast forward to 10 years in my hometown, and then I moved to Ohio, and I served as a fire chief for 10 years. Then I used moved to Minnesota, uh, where I live now, and I served as a fire chief here for 10 years. In 2004, I went back to school to earn my Ph.D. The motivation for that was when I retired, I would teach at a college, and the Ph.D. would help me get my, my uh, foot in the door at a college, and then I'd have my retirement job. So when I enrolled in my Ph.D. program, I had to do original research, which meant I had to try to discover something that no one had ever discovered before. And I didn't know how to do it, but they taught me how to do it. And my advisor said, pick a topic that you're passionate about. Because a lot of people who enter into these programs, they burn out and quit, or they run out of money and quit. you got to find a topic that you're willing to study every day for five years. Well, the topic that I chose was firefighter safety. But I really didn't know what area that I was going to specialize in until I started thinking about my career history, and then it came to me. All those times I kept asking, how could they not see it coming? And this was a question that I wanted to try to answer in my research. So to do this, I took a deep dive into the neuroscience of decision-making. 
And it was amazing because I was discovering things that no one had ever taught me anywhere along the way in my career. I didn't even know that there are all kinds of groups and societies and people who dedicate them li- their lives to studying situational awareness and high-risk decision-making. And uh, the studies are not done um, with firefighters. They're done in medicine and military and aviation and a few other industries where the money really flows, but not so much with us. And I was learning things about these studies that were just amazing me, just incredible. And I thought, man, I wonder if I'm the only one that's been out of the loop and hasn't been taught this stuff and doesn't and, and you know didn't know this stuff. And so I put together a little program and I took it to a conference and I shared it at that conference. And the feedback I got immediately indicated to me that I was not alone and that there were lots of people who did not um, uh, know the things that I did not know as well. And I wasn't even done with my program yet. I was still a student. So when I finished the program, uh, I made a, a, a course called uh, Decision Making Under Stress. And that has then uh, morphed into four, essentially four key programs that I um, deliver predominantly in my cadre. Um, I don't teach on just, just anything. Um, I have a very specialized niche on the topic of situational awareness and high-risk decision-making and helping first responders um, develop and maintain situational awareness and use that situational awareness as the foundation for good decision-making. The uh, programs that I deliver uh, range anything from uh, a keynote address that can go 30 minutes to two and a half hours uh, all the way up to half-day workshops to full day seminars to three day events to five day events and the topic of situational awareness is so there's so much to it that uh, I never seem to run out of content but I always seem to run out of time in which to share all the the valuable content that I that I have accumulated uh, I've written five books on the topic of situational awareness uh, one for Penwell Publishing, one my doctoral dissertation, and three volumes of Situational Awareness Matters books. And I've created four uh, video programs, one called Mental Management of Emergencies, one called 50 Ways to Kill a First Responder, one called Firefighter Safety Mistakes and Best Practices, and one called Training for Failure, Why We Must Change the Way We Train First Responders. And those four DVDs are essentially uh, recorded sessions of live event programs of my four most popular topics. Uh, The topics that I teach have gained some popularity. I've presented them around the United States and Canada, England, Hong Kong, and uh, a couple years ago I got a chance to take the uh, tour across Australia, and I presented uh, in Brisbane, in Melbourne, um, Perth, Hobart, and Sydney, and that was uh, quite quite an incredible trip there to share that share the message with um, our friends in Australia. And uh, the opportunities continue to come at a pace that are it just it's just um, crazy amazing to me how many. Uh, programs I get to teach a year over over a hundred programs a year. I often get asked by people at, at programs that follow me on social media or subscribe to my newsletter. How many days are you on the road a year? And uh, while there is some variation to it, um, it usually is in the range of two hundred to two hundred and thirty days a year that I'm I'm on the road uh, sharing the message. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm married and have been, had my, uh, bride for, um, well, counting the time we dated almost 35 years now, um, cause we dated five years before we were married and, uh, uh, she is very, very understanding, very supportive of, of the work that I do. And, and she was a firefighter too when we met. So she certainly understands the passion that I have for improving first responder safety and um, the uh, message uh, was so inspiring to me that I decided that I would launch a blog to share the message of situational awareness for those who were unable to attend 
live events. So in 2011, the Situational Awareness Matters website was launched, samatters.com. And uh, my motivation there was to be able to share out the lessons in articles that were not, you know, 300 word sound bites or 500 word sound bites that, um, you know, the blogging experts say um, should be the length of a blog. But I wanted mine to be long enough that people could print them uh, or download them and use them as training sessions. So I've tried very hard to include best practices, discussion questions, um, so that the blog articles are truly um, a lesson that can be shared around a coffee table or as part of a of a training session. So my goal was to write a hundred articles in a hundred days when I launched the the website. And uh, I I like writing, and and I've written mm, hundreds, uh, probably three hundred plus articles for journals and magazines. Um, but that w- that was a pretty ambitious goal, and uh, I didn't I didn't quite make it. I only wrote ninety four articles in the first hundred days, so I fell six short, and. Uh, But I was still, you know, pretty happy with that. And uh, for the first year, I refused to um, go into the backside of the website to see the what they call the metrics to see how many visits and how many downloads and and I was just afraid that that no one was visiting the site and that I would um, that that would discourage me from continuing to advance the miss the mission so and the anniversary of the first year i went and i looked at the metrics and uh, i had uh, almost a hundred thousand visits on the website and uh, those people had downloaded like two hundred and fifty thousand articles so each person about two two and a half average article um, downloads and i was extremely uh, inspired by that, I just could not believe that that I was getting that much um, traffic on on the website, and so that uh, that got me thinking that I needed to get on a regular uh, content creation schedule. So I started writing articles uh, on the blog every Friday, and there has been articles posted every Friday since the uh since the um one year anniversary and uh that was um october of 2012 so there are hundreds of articles on the website all free to use all free to download all free to use as part of your department training um you can't reprint them without permission but if you contact me and tell me where you want to reprint it at in on another website or something like that I'll give you I'll give you permission to do that and then in 2014 I decided that I wanted to podcast and what inspired me to do that was I was in my travels talking to so many first responders who had so many incredible near miss stories that they were sharing with me and others in the class and their lessons learned and I thought these people need to have a platform by which to share their incredible near miss stories and I know you know there's the near miss reporting website where these near misses can you can read about them in written form but it's fundamentally something different and special about hearing the person in their own voice sometimes a crackly voice um, sometimes a voice of desperation sometimes a voice of embarrassment that they have had their own near miss event and to give me the opportunity to ask them questions that relate to their situational awareness to their decision making to 
their lessons learned, to their regrets, to their discussions with their families about uh, what they told them about their about their near miss event. Um, I think has just been a very very cool way to share those lessons. The one thing that disappoints me the most about this is in my classes, I routinely and regularly ask people who've had near misses and hands go up and I'll say, can you, will you, do you mind telling your story? And they'll, no, no, I don't mind at all. And they'll sit there in front of a hundred people and tell their story, but I can't but beg them to come on to the podcast and share their story with the bigger audience. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what the fear is. Um, but I, I really wish some of these stories, more of these stories that are being shared in the in the classroom, would be um, shared on the podcast. But you know, I I'm, I don't really push anybody to do it. I encourage them to do it, but I don't you know really get aggressive about getting people to be on the show. But those who have come on the show, oh my lord, have they shared some amazing and incredible stories and if you haven't listened to the back episodes of the radio show you really need to go back all the way to episode one and listen to those 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 uh near miss interviews and and some of them involve incidents where where firefighters died and um you know you're talking to the survivors and they were right along the side of somebody who got killed or severely burned or hit by a vehicle or shot i mean it's just just incredible these these stories that have been been uh shared on on the uh on the on the podcast so go back and listen to some of those older episodes i don't don't think you'll regret it so then after a while i i realized that my my website needed to have a a remake or an overhaul. So I um, launched a new platform for my website that that has the uh, the blogs, you know, clickable through that you can just go to all the blog articles and clickable through that you can go to all the podcast episodes. The most recent blog articles are listed on the home page. The most recent podcast episodes scroll on the home page. And uh, I added a web store so that you could um, have access to buy the uh, the videos and the books and and uh, uh, some other products that I have there that I promote um, like Sims you share software and uh, then I put some videos up on the home page I'm I'm in the process of um, making some uh, mini courses so you'll see those coming out soon where some of the courses that I teach in the live events, I'm going to turn into um, virtual training sessions and make those available um, where people can just buy them and stream them um, through their computer and uh, and get basically get the classes that you would get in a live event. But for those who have uh, never been to a live event or can't afford to host a live event, there'll be a way to get that training. Then also on the on the uh, website there is um, a clickable link for a free membership. There's a red box on the right side of the home page that you can click on, and uh, if you sign up, you'll get um, a monthly newsletter from me that is uh, basically summarizes the blog articles that were written for the month, summarizes the podcast episodes for the month, and uh, it will include some pictures from programs that have been done. And uh, it's just some, it's just some other miscellaneous things that are that are going on here in the uh, in the situational awareness matters community. I mean, the the newsletters um, uh, share some personal things as well. I always try to put just the the most important stuff on the front end, the blog summaries and the and the um, the podcast summaries. But then, if you want to scroll through and look at pictures of of the uh, places that I've been and different uh, fire stations and fire trucks and things like that. And some people enjoy that and some people don't, don't, don't uh, enjoy that. And you don't have to click through to any of that. You know, just, you can stick right to the meat and potatoes and just get the, get the summaries. But the, the newsletters go out uh, once a month. Anybody who signs up for a newsletter gets a, a bonus report that I've created called 25 best practices to improve first responder safety. 
Uh, on the homepage, you can also get connected with me on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. I have a YouTube channel that you can go and watch YouTube videos that I've created called SA Matters TV. That's the YouTube channel, SA Matters TV. Uh, there's clickable links there to send uh, email. There's an RSS feeder if you want to get notifications of um, each new blog post or each new um, podcast episode. You can put your email address in on the homepage and get the uh, notifications of new postings. Um, you can also... Uh, view the upcoming event schedule. So if you want to see if I'm anywhere going to be anywhere near you that you can attend an event or if you want to host a companion event, uh, there's a way to click on the blue box on the right side of the homepage and um, get uh, a look at up all the upcoming events. And, uh, you know, sometimes people will say, well, if you're ever in my area, let me know. And I get so many of those messages that it's really really hard for me to keep track of everybody who's you know has an interest of of wants to know when i'm in your area so the best thing to do is really just to go to that blue box on the right side of the home page and and just look at the upcoming event schedule it changes very frequently so you'll have to just check it and uh um if and watch for things coming up in your area there's also a word cloud on the right side of the home page with all the keywords of um, of not all the keywords, but many of the keywords of the uh, of the uh, articles that I write about, and, uh, and there's all it's really cool thing is um, uh, Midwest Fire, the host of the podcast, uh, also um, sponsored the creation of a periodic chart of situational awareness barriers. And this periodic chart looks like the periodic chart of the elements, but it has all the situational awareness barriers listed on the periodic chart. And if you go to samatters.com forward slash chart, you can see that chart, and then each of the barriers that's on there becomes a clickable link. It's like a live interactive link that'll take you to all the articles video, audio, things that have been created about those particular situational awareness barriers. And that's uh, that's a really cool, quick, easy way to drill down to a particular topical area that you have an interest in learning more about. So um, that's samatters.com forward slash chart. And uh, you can also buy the charts if you want to put them up in your training room at your fire station. In the in the store link, there is a um, place in there for the uh, for you to be able to get the the chart. So what's on the horizon? Um, well, I've been uh, I've been working hard to try to find a way to um, scale the business, which is to say. To continue to grow the business, but maybe not have me traveling as much. So I'm going to be looking to take on a uh, a few uh, associate speakers who will be able to teach the situational awareness message that uh, after they have attended a train the trainer program that I've provided, and then uh, be able to put them out on the road. Uh, so if you know of anyone who um, has been in the first response business um, for a minimum of at least 10 years and has an interest in teaching the me my message of situational awareness and high-risk decision-making, have them contact me through the samatters.com website by clicking on the Contact Us link. And I'm only going to take on a handful of these uh, associate trainers uh, because I wanted to keep it small and manageable but I also want to be able to meet the demand of the, for the programs and the demand is certainly far exceeding my capacity and uh, so I'm going to be looking to hand some of that off. I'm also going to be making some virtual programs um, as these mini courses that I mentioned and I also I'm going to resurrect my online academy. I had an academy up for a while 
and I, I took it down to make some revisions to it and to enhance it, and that academy is going to be coming back, and I'm not sure if I'm going to make that available as a full academy or as individual modules. The problem with the full academy was that when I made it, I said, I don't want to hold anything back. I want to share everything I know. I want to give the person who enrolls in the academy all the content, which was good and bad. Uh, the good part is that the person who completes the academy is going to know everything that they need to know about situational awareness and high-risk decision-making. The bad part is the academy is enormous, and there's just too much there for somebody to try to digest in the 90 days that I had the academy available online. And so I'm going to parse that down into modules and perhaps make the modules available individually. And if that's something that you're interested in, you certainly can hit the contact us link and send me some feedback about whether you'd be interested in having these modules, which would be kind of like mini courses on topics related to situation awareness and high risk decision making. I think that there will be an interest in in that, but uh, um, I, you know, I won't know until I I hear hear from you all if if that is something that it would be inspiring for you to be able to take these um, mini when I say mini courses, you know, ranging from one to two hours of of content that would uh you know just basically help you eat this elephant uh a bite at a time is uh kind of like the the motivation behind what what i have um in my thought there i also have a private facebook page um facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash sa matters if you're interested in joining that um i'm trying to build a community of people that are like the share ideas and thoughts and I share you know, some uh, special content there and and uh, little short brief messages on how to improve situational awareness. I offer some discounts uh, for the products and uh, also on Twitter you can follow at Rich Gasway on Twitter at or at SA Matters on Twitter. Either one I send pretty much the same content out on both feeds. Um, the, the only reason I have two feeds is that, uh, initially I thought it would be good to create, have two separate feeds, one personally for me and then one for SA matters. But what I found out was that, uh, uh, people followed both of them. And, uh, so I ended up growing a, a big community there of both, um, on both Twitter accounts. And it's kind of hard to now shut one down. So at rich Gasway or, or at SA matters, on Twitter. Uh, also on LinkedIn, you can find at Rich Gasway on LinkedIn. And uh, I get a fair amount of inquiries about programs through social media. I also announce when I'm going to be in different regions and announce the upcoming programs on social media. So it's a good way to be connected and know when I might be in your region and you might be able to uh, attend a program uh, if I'm somewhere, you know, close by for you. I also want to recognize the uh, people behind the scenes who do work for me. Um, Carol Gottwald, my office manager. Uh, anybody who's done any business with my company has talked to Carol, and she's the one that takes care of all the proposals, all the contracts, all the logistics. Uh, just incredible, incredible person with tremendous uh, um, support for me. Uh, Dee Dee Stockton, my virtual assistant, she's located in uh, Colorado, and Dee Dee just does a wonderful job for me. She posts all my blogs, um, finds the pictures for my blog. She posts all my um, uh, podcast episodes, all the show notes for the podcasts, and just gives me a tremendous amount of support there. So thank you. D for for all that help that you give to me. I want to take just a moment to share um, a couple of pieces of recent um, feedback that I that I got on some programs. 
Um, I don't get feedback um, all that often in the way of emails. I mean, I do in course evaluations and things like that. So when I get an email from somebody, you know, that's that's a really special thing for me. And I always ask them permission if I can uh, share the uh, the feedback that I get. So everything that I share here and in the newsletter is is with permission from the people who who send it in. So this one says, Doctor Gasway, I thoroughly enjoyed your presentation this past Friday and Saturday. In Tom's River. Uh, believe me, uh, in my 28 years in the fire service, I have been through many lectures, slideshows, and presentations. Yours rates in my top five. You had a great balance of lecturing with visual presentations, and most importantly, your great interaction with your audience. Getting people to speak in front of their peers is always a difficult task to accomplish. Let's face it, no one wants to embarrass themselves in front of the people they have to work with. You achieved this goal with ease, which shows how comfortable the audience was with you. I know that the group had a little fun with my quote, the greatest thing an old firefighter can do is teach a young firefighter how to become an old firefighter. But in essence, programs like yours do exactly that, which is why programs like yours are so important. We have to change the culture one person at a time so that the young firefighters will not be afraid to ask questions and will be able to use these tools you provide for them in essence enabling them to become old firefighters again thank you for the very informative and useful program best of luck to you in the future andy gorich the safety officer for station 28 east dover fire company number four thank you andy that was awesome. If you've experienced or witnessed a near miss and would like to have a platform to share your lessons learned with others, contact me by visiting the essaymatters.com site and click on the contact us link on the top of the home page. Think about it for a moment. The lessons from your near miss event could save the life of another first responder. If you want to share your experiences, contact me. If you haven't subscribed to the SA Matters radio podcast yet, please consider taking a moment to go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio and subscribe. While you're there, please consider giving some feedback on the show. And if you like the show, give it a five-star review. This is really important because it inspires me to work harder for you. A lot of time goes into producing and recording and editing the show and lining up the guests. And your feedback lets me know that you appreciate the show. Thank you again to Midwest Fire. They've uh, sponsored this radio show for the end of the second year now. And their their support has just been tremendous. And their dedication to firefighter safety is is second to none. If you haven't if you haven't checked out their trucks, check them out at midwestfire.com. I you'll be very impressed, especially with the all poly design of of their apparatus i've toured their factory in fact i've shot a video the last time i toured the factory and i'm going to have that video up here soon on my youtube channel and if you want to take a tour of their factory you'll be able to watch that that youtube video it's uh it's it's pretty amazing um what what they're doing there with their all poly design trucks stick around to the end of the show once i do the closing credits i'm going to give some stuff away Well, that's it. Episode 100 is complete. Thank you to all of our live event hosts, and thank you to our listeners for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there, and may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. Okay, to my son Micah, carry us out as you have done for 100 episodes. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. 
If you are interested in booking Dr. Gasway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgasway.com. Okay, as I promised, I'm going to give some stuff away. Um, but you're going to have to earn it. I want some testimonials. I want some emails that include that you'll get by sending me the emails. It is implied permission that I'll be able to use them to promote the message. And I want them to be something of substance, not just a, hey, great job or, hey, nice podcast. But sharing you know, a, a solid takeaway, a lesson that you've learned, a an episode that would be beneficial to you, uh, something you learned in on the blog or in a video or in a live event that has been that has made a difference for you, a solid takeaway. Then you um, that's step one. Then post something on social media and tag me on it, Facebook or Twitter or a, a recommendation on LinkedIn. Any of those three, and if you do the, and then uh, if you do those two th- two things, um, send me an email testimonial and post something on my social media and tag me on it. Then I'm going to send you a signed copy of my newest book, Situational Awareness Matters, Volume Three. If you already have Volume Three, tell me in the email um, that you uh, have Volume Three already, and I'll send you. Volume one or two, if you would rather have volume one or two, and this um, is going to, I'm going to do this for 30 days. So the episode is going to air on March 22nd. So the testimonials and the social and the social media, they got to go together. Got to do both of them. That I get um, coming to me by April 22nd. Um, you will score. A book, and there might even be some bonus content that I'll send off to you with the book, and I'll just let that be a surprise as just a way of saying thank you for coming with me for 100 episodes.